Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Today we are doing something I haven't done in a while, but I'm so excited to get back to, and that is duping out some palettes that are new on the market or new-ish, you know, and uh, not buying them. I don't need these palettes, and although I can actually appreciate some of the color stories or think that they're pretty, or depending on your own collection, they might be great pickups for you. For me, I just feel like they're gonna be redundant. I feel like I might use them when I'm first excited about them, but then afterwards, like how much are they really sticking around in my collection? How much am I really getting out of them? And we all know with the makeup community, the way it is with the makeup brands coming out with shit all of the time, like there's always a new next palette. And so I try my best when I can to resist some launches that I feel like aren't going to stand the test of time for me. And these are the ones that I decided to do about some color stories, get excited. And one of the things I really love about this exercise of going through my singles collection, cause it's massive, is that it really makes me take the time to focus focus on each color that's in a palette and breaking down a palette like that really helps to strip it from the fantasy, from the packaging, from the ideas you have of what it is as a whole and looking at everything individually, you're like, oh my gosh, like I have either most of those or it's just this one pop that's kind of bringing me in and seducing me. So I guess I'll give you the rundown really fast of what we're going to be duping, but these videos tend to be long, so I'll try to keep it pretty short. So first on the docket is the Urban Decay Naked and Robin Eisenberg palette. I do really like the colors that are in here. I think that it's really pretty and I like the outer packaging like so much about this. I think it's a really beautiful palette, but it was one of those ones that I was just unsure if it would be like the formula I wanted to. So um, I decided to just make my own and see if I could get something similar and get inspired by the color story because I do think it's really pretty. Next, I tackle the ABH Rose Metals eyeshadow palette. This is one that is really enticing to me. I love that this is full of kind of mid-tone shimmers. The texture in here looks beautiful. I do like neutral, so that is calling to me. And it feels like something I'd get a lot of wear of, but I know I have these in my singles. You know, I knew that I had these. So I definitely wanted to try my hand at recreating the whole vibe, the colors, the texture, the feeling, everything I hope that it would be in my single shadows. Oh, okay, next, this is the Pat McGrath Mothership Mega Celestial Nirvana. This came out with the holiday collection and it's $82, so it's quite expensive. Sometimes your stuff does go on sale though for holiday, so if you want this, definitely look out for those sales. You know, initially I was so excited about this entire collection, and as the, the release date came closer and closer, well, she kind of released this in a bunch of different sections, but um, with this palette, the more I looked at it, the more I was like, I'm excited that she's doing color. I think that was drawing me in, and I like the one from last year, so I felt like those positive vibes were kind of like transferring onto this, but when I really broke it down, I was like, there's a a lot of really colorful mattes in here and although those are pretty and I'm again so happy to see Pat McGrath doing some color like that because I feel like we don't get that very often. I just knew I had like singles in mind that I was like I'm pretty sure I have like those exact colors and I don't always reach for color so I was like you know what I'm gonna try to dupe this out instead of getting it and I'm really happy with that. I really wanted to kick that last bit of FOMO. And the last two palettes the Huda Beauty Empowered. I really do like this palette like as a concept and I get that so many people probably would love this but to me and my collection I just felt like I had it a million times over like I wanted to buy the new Huda palette I'm not gonna lie because I love Rose Quartz so much from last year and I feel like I've always missed out on them because I wasn't into neutrals and I always would just write off the big Huda palettes but once I got the Rose Quartz I was like oh my god I'm missing out and when this one dropped and the color story was what it was I just there wasn't something strong enough to make me want it and I thought you know what let's just dupe it and then I also threw in the Tarte Man Eater because this was a palette that for a hot second I wanted. I, <laughs> tell me why, <laughs> tell me why. This is a larger palette. I'm not usually into those. I'm not necessarily usually into Tarte. And this was very fall themed, but it had a few more pops of color actually with a green and some maroons. But I also thought, you know, it's kind of just a generic fall theme. And I think I could do it. I think I could do that. So hope you guys will enjoy the video. I do create this look at the end. So I hope you will like that. And yeah, let's just get into duping and playing with my single shadows. All right guys, so the first palette that I'm excited to dupe out, I really like this color story and it's from Urban Decay. It's in collaboration with Robin Eisenberg and this is such a beautiful palette. I think this might actually be tied into their holiday release. It seems like a lot of the holiday sets that they come out with every year are also kind of in the same packaging with the similar design. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but it's not one that I necessarily want to add to my collection. And I think I can do something at least similar and inspired 
inspired by it. So I'm going to pick through, try to find similar shadows. I might not do everything exact, but you'll see that in a second as I kind of shop around and see what I have. Okay guys, so here are the colors that I picked out. I feel like this is turning into more of a, like a warm side and like a blue cooler side, but I don't think it's actually capturing quite what I'm seeing, but I kind of like the vibe that I have going on. So I'm going to rearrange them and see the order I like. I might even expand the palette. I had an idea to do that as I was going. I'm not sure what I'm actually gonna do though. Um, so I'm gonna try to fit them in here and then I'll go over the colors that I select. So this took a turn I wasn't expecting it to. I did expand the palette. So the original palette is 12 shadows and my palette is 14. So I have two more shadows in here and I really organized this by having warm tones on top and cooler tones on the bottom row. It just fit better with the circle pans and all that. I don't know, it just felt more fleshed out this way. I quite like it, although this is quite a bit uh, more subdued, I would say. the original palette I was looking at, uh, I feel like has more true jewel colors and these seem like jewel tones that are definitely, again, more subdued, except for maybe this blue, maybe this kind of fiery orange and the gold. Those seem pretty full saturation or at least like normal saturation that you'd expect where everything else has something a little bit kind of grungy about it. I really quite like it, but let's swatch it out and I'll tell you what colors are in here. All of the mattes for this palette, I actually took from Sydney Grace. I just think that's such a great matte formula and I had everything I felt like I needed for this. I stuck with a lot of the main colors that were in the original palette. This one's called San Jose. It is just a nice like peachy brown. Um, I didn't want to go with like an actual cream because I feel like I don't really use those types of colors, but these where it adds just the tiniest bit of something in the crease are really nice. Uh, I tend to actually use those even though they look so fucking boring in palettes, they are useful. <laughs> they really are. So I have that for my mat. Next, it's kind of out of order with how I organized the palette since I did a little rearranging, but this was kind of subbing in for the second shade in the palette. This is also from Sydney Grace. It's called Puppy. And it's just a nice, like cooler toned brown shade. Really pigmented, so smooth, so soft. Like, you know, I thought this would go nicely with the blues that are in here, but you could put it in with the neutral and even warmer shadows on the top too. Then I think we're pretty much in order until we get to the bottom row. So this is from Luxy. It's actually from their cocktail collection. They came out with that one. I, I don't even know, it was right before the Halloween collection that they also came out with. This is quite sparkly. It's like neutrally, but also very pink. It's one of those like kind of topper type shades. So it doesn't have a ton of base pigment at all. It's really just sparkly and shimmery. So pretty, really like that one. And I thought it had the pink, but also was pretty neutral overall. So I thought it fit pretty nicely and I love the added texture. I mean, would it be an Urban Decay palette if there wasn't a gold color in there? I feel like they do a gold in every freaking palette, even in a collab palette. This one is another one from Luxie in that cocktail collection. I don't even think I said the name of this last one. That is called Tequila Sunrise, and this is called Until Dawn. I think this is actually not from the cocktail, and it's from Halloween, the Halloween one that just came out. I did order all of those. I don't know how I feel about all of them yet, but this one is really quite pretty. It is gold, but this one has like a pink sparkle to it. Uh, very, very shimmery. It has a light base on it, but not much. It's really mostly just those really glittery kind of sparkly 
pigments in it. Again, I really like the texture on that. And if I was going to go with a more, you know, traditional yellow gold, I thought might as well do something with a little sparkle and also that tiny, you know, difference with the pink sparkle. Back to some mattes. This one here is called Picking Peaches from uh, Sydney Grace. I think this was limited edition or something in a bundle, but it's just a nice peachy shade, like a peachy orange neutral. Next, I have another matte. I did pick two different maroons. We'll get to those in a second, but this is subbing in for the matte that is in the palette as well. This is called Southern Flame. This also might've been a part of that same bundle. That was a couple years ago, but it's just a bit deeper. It's like a terracotta brown with again, a lot of like peachy orangeness to it. The last two shades in the first row are for the maroon colors that are kind of in there. There's two what look similar. I'm sure they're different in person, but they look kind of similar in the palette and the pictures I'm seeing. So I just kind of took my own liberties with this. This one here is from uh, Shine by SD. It's called Flamethrower and it is a really fun, I mean, all the Shine by SD stuff is just absolutely amazing. You guys already know, I have like tons of swatch videos and you can definitely check out those videos if you wanna see some more in-depth swatches. But I really liked that this one leaned a little more orange. It has like a gold flip on it, has like more of a gray base. It has some really electric-y, like almost neon red orange uh, sparkle in here as well. I just thought it looked so pretty. Again, I love adding so much texture to palettes when I create them with my own singles. And then for the other one, I did go with more of like an actual maroon. This one has more of like a berry undertone though, but I liked that it was at least different. I really wanted to make sure I wasn't putting the same type of shadow in. This is the color Saw. Ooh, I think that's from also the new Luxie Halloween. Um, and I'm assuming <laughs> it's maybe Saw like the movie? I don't really know, but it's a beautiful satin maroon color. So I put those in for the more warm tones. And now we have these beautiful blues to look at. I really loved the idea of, I don't know, really building out the blue section. Unfortunately, it doesn't lean as purple as I feel like the original palette does. I just didn't have the, the one good purple matte shade that I feel like would actually work at least in singles that I could see. So this one is called Matte Blues from Glam Shop. And this is just a matte baby blue. It doesn't have that kind of periwinkle color to it, unfortunately, but it is what it is. So um, I put that in, I chose it. I wanted it matte, I really did, and that was the best I could do. Then we have some Sydney Grace. Really the Sydney Grace shadows are what got me, and I think that's why this leans a little more neutral because all of those tend to be a little more subdued, I guess. This is from the Temptalia and Sydney Grace palette. I think it's the Quintessence. I think that's what it's called. Um, and it's the seventh shadow in the rose. <laughs> uh, but that is a beautiful jewel tone. I just couldn't not put it in there. Once I, I saw this one, I was like, it's really quite perfect. So I put that one in, but then this darker shade really called my name. This is from the On the Horizon palette from that same collaboration. And I really loved the idea of something super dark, like really, really dark to add some grit. I also thought this could be used to deepen up some of these warmer tones. I don't know, it had a lot of uses I felt like to me and I liked the idea of something super smoky, almost black in this palette. So I went with it. The last three shadows kind of all lean a little more teal or have a little more green with them. And this first one is from Shine by SD. It's the Mythical Seas shadow. I love this because it is more of that tealy blue. It's more of a topper. Oh, I love it. I wanna recreate the Midnight album cover makeup, and I think this would be so pretty as like a topper over something dark, even one of these or some other blue in my collection, but I, I just love this one. I think it's so, so pretty, and I really liked it as, again, a topper for any of the blues in here. This shadow is the one that made me want to just expand the palette because I couldn't not put this like green in, this like blue green, so deep and dark. This is from the On The Horizon palette, that same collaboration with Temptalia that Sydney Grace did. And I I just loved it. These two together, absolutely <laughs> stunning. Like, ugh, uh, uh, I can't, it's so, pretty and uh, I loved the idea of these like greens across from the kind of terracotta colors because of the way they are on the color wheel, like they just complement each other magically. And then another on the horizon shade 
and this one's a really pretty matte. Um, I just wanted a matte color to deepen up any of the blues if that was a look I wanted to do. I just thought it rounded out the palette nicely. And I mean, as a trio, is this not the most stunning little trio you could ever imagine? You look like the most vixenous siren of the sea, like so pretty. And you could go light and airy, you could go deep and sultry and kind of keep going even murkier and sultrier and deeper, like make a combination, go more glam. Like there's so many routes, I love it. But let me swatch it all out. I forgot I do that. It's been a while since I've done one of these. So I'm gonna swatch them all out on my arm so we can see the palette in its entirety. All right, so here we are with the swatches. Oh, it's pretty satisfying seeing them um, swatched out this way where the colors are broken up like this as well. Um, I really love it, love the texture. Like this is giving so much, I love it. And also I like that for the neutrals um, or you know more warm tones, which a lot of the times I consider neutral even though you know they still have not a neutral color to them, but they seem more wearable, I guess. Anyway, there's quite a bit of texture on that side, but I really like this palette. Um, definitely different than what I was duping, but I'm pretty dang happy with this one. I'd love to know what you guys think. Wish I had the purple, I feel like that that's really what changes this one and kind of led to the rest, even though I found this last, so I don't know. It really sealed the deal, I guess, that this, the blues don't really go purple enough, but I really love like this quad. I really love the six pan though. That's I think what's special, right? Doesn't that just look rich, like velvety bohemian curtains with a tassel on it? Like I just love it. I love that so much. All right, next is one I'm really excited to dupe out, actually. Uh, this is the Rose Metals palette from ABH, and I really like the tones in here. It's pretty neutral and kind of grungy. I think the thing that really makes me excited about this palette or something I'm drawn to is the fact that a lot of these colors seem more mid-tone. There aren't a ton of really light, you know, champagnes, and I don't find myself necessarily reaching for those. I like something just a little bit darker on my lid, um, more mid-tone. So this has a lot of those, and I'm excited to try to recreate it. It's hard to find like the correct representation of this online because there's a picture of someone holding it and everything looks a little bit lighter, but there's a picture of it just like the standard palette and it definitely looks darker. So I'm probably gonna try to make it more off of that. And I think I'm gonna try to reach for just my Luxie singles because I feel like so many of the tones in here match the Halloween stuff that just came out as well as some of the past like shadows that I have. So I think I'm gonna try to reach for those. Anyway, let's get started. Look how fun these colors are. It was really fun reaching for these because it was a mix of those like warm kind of bronzy tones with rosy tones, but also some coolness going on. And I think I have a pretty good selection of stuff here to see if I can create something similar. I really wanna do this one pretty exact. So let's see how they fit in. Okay, I think I did it. These are the four I didn't actually use and I did pull in a different shadow, so we'll go over that. Okay, starting off, this is from Luxie, like so many of these are gonna be. This is the shade Flower Child. I really wanted to go for something pink and this is more of like a satin, 
but it has a really nice, like almost blue looking shift going on to it, or like green actually. It's kind of like blue green, something a little fun, but I really love the idea of this just all over the lid. Like just this shadow, maybe something in the crease, you could go warm or cool, but I really just, I don't know. I wanted this glossy, but like subtle on my eye with some mascara and a glossy ass lip. Like I really love that. I really love that idea. So that's what I put in for the first shade. The next, this is that same shadow I actually used in the last palette. Uh, an example right off the bat of when you have a lot of singles, if you try to go that route and invest in singles and recreating color stories, creating your own color stories, you get multiple uses out of the shadows that you have. If you have a maroon type of shimmer you're looking for, if you have one of those, it's probably gonna suffice for a lot of different palettes. And so it works so perfect in here. And I also feel like the texture on this is perfect. And what I think this palette would be like, where it's like this sultry shimmer, but it doesn't have a lot of sparkle to it. This palette to me, you know, as much as I do have some sparkle going on, I really did like the idea of picking more like you know, sultry metallics and not necessarily super duper uh, sparkly things. So I loved that one. Then the next shade, I didn't have something as uh, textured as that, that I felt like fit the vibe. So I went with something I think I'll actually use a ton of. This is from Luxie, <laughs> imagine that. Again, same thing with like the texture I'm talking about here. I really love this. This is called Thorny and it's one of those colors that looks really cool, but the base on it's actually quite warm. And so I know that this would probably be the color I wear every day. <laughs> like this is probably the everyday shadow for me, honestly, uh, but I love it. And um, although it's not textured, I think it has a lot of use. So I liked that sub. And if you didn't remember, that's the shade Saw. Yeah, the Saw shade. <laughs> the last three shades in here are more like warm tone. So I went with a nice like warm bronze. This is the shade Cider from Luxy. Again, we have a nice metallic kind of satiny shade, a little higher shine, but not foiled. And it's just a pretty classic, I feel like fall type of color. So I thought that would be good. I almost put something else in here, not as, you know, warm, but I really feel like to give this palette the actual look of the ABH one, I needed to actually go warmer and not kind of do my own thing. Next is a matte color. This is the shade Pharaoh. I've had this shadow for years. I don't think this is still available, but pretty common, I feel like, you know, warm brown, orangey type shade. And then this one, is in so many of my duping videos. It's called The Monarch. And I think this butterfly collection was one of the best ones that Luxie's done. This is a bronze and it has a lot more texture. You can see the shine difference here. It has a little less pigmented base, but more shine and sparkle. There's gold shimmer and pink shimmer in it. And it's really quite beautiful. And I liked having both of those options for texture. It doesn't seem as dark as the shadow in the palette, but I think it works well. And I like that sub also. Moving on to the second row. This first shade um, looks like a golden, like a light golden color. And I went with something that kind of gives off a gold, but it has a like a pink base. And I like that with the idea of the rose metals kind of going on. It shines pretty gold though, you could see there, but it has that pink base, some blue reflect, gold reflect, silver reflect, green reflect, like one of those really fun Neut neutrals, you know, it's like more than a neutral type of color. Absolutely love it, really am happy I added it because I feel like it adds something special to this more neutral palette. And that is the shade Rosé, really a good one. I should do a top 10 look-see, maybe I'll make that into a short. Next, the shade here is called Coppa Feel. This actually isn't quite like the one in the palette, but I really love the idea of a rose gold for this rose metal theme, and I felt like this worked decent for for the shadow that's in there. So really pretty, another one I could see myself using quite often. Then I went with a matte taupe shade to go for the next shadow. This is called Topelessly Devoted from Luxie. Again, I don't think this is available still, but any matte like mid-tone taupe would work nicely for this palette. And I really love that color. Like. Again, look at this six pan. <laughs> that is like a dream to me, I love it. Last three shadows in the palette. I went with a matte terracotta color. Mine doesn't look as dark as the one in the picture, but also that other picture looked lighter. So I don't know how close this is, but I just went with something pretty punchy, pretty saturated to really add something to the palette so it didn't get kind of lost. I felt like that shade kind of adds something. Then for the next color, I had another shade picked out that was more of a darker taupe but I went with this one from Sydney Grace. This is called Purple Sky, and I really love this. It has a really nice sheen to it, and it looks almost black, but it has a blue and almost like 
green kind of shimmer to it. And I know this isn't like exactly what's in the palette. It might be a little bit darker, but I really love the contrast, honestly, of this with the terracotta color. I felt like as a visual look of the palette, it really added something. And so I went with that one instead. And I loved this kind of inky eye or like this oil spill kind of eye with the way that these other metallics are in here. I thought those played nice. And then last, I had to go out of the looksy shadows that I had again because this is a nice dark brown and I really wanted something as dark as I could get. And this is really the darkest I had in my collection. This is from Colored Rain when they still did single shadows. It's the shade Chocolate. I really love that this doesn't have too much warmth in it. So it really adds that, that darkness, you know, like a depth to the palette. And I, I really love it. It would go with warm tones or cool tones because it's kind of, you know, neutral. And I love those three together as well. So that is the palette. Now let me swatch it out for you together. All right, here it is all swatched out. I kind of did the, the bigger swatches, but I really love this. I love the more subtle texture. There's a few fun shadows. Uh, I would say this one, the Monarch, Rose and Purple Sky are the only ones with that a little bit more texture. The rest have this really nice, just like soft metallic or like a strong satin to them. And I think it's beautiful. And I think for me, it really represents what I imagine this palette to be texturally as well. And I love that too. And so that is the Rose Metals palette or my version of it. Uh, I really love that one. And this is one I think I'll actually like keep together. I think, like, I think I'm actually gonna try to use this quite a bit because I think it's stunning and definitely more my style. I love these as six pans. Like this as a six pan, again, beautiful, love that. This is a six pan, again, beautiful, love that. <laughs> okay, I don't think I was recording, unfortunately. So um, I am picking out now the Celestial Nirvana palette from Pat McGrath for Holiday. This is a palette that I initially really wanted, I thought when I saw the pictures drop, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I'm pretty sure I have all of these matte colorful shades and I, I do like color, but I don't think I need to buy this for Pat McGrath's mattes. I love that she did more color in this palette, but I was realizing I don't know how much I'm gonna use it. And I thought, you know what? Let me try to dupe it and kind of kick the last bit of FOMO I have, like that last, I don't know, 2%. I'm pretty over wanting it, but I thought it'd be fun to see if I could dupe it out. So um, I've already started and you can see, I have some like, re I'm telling you really perfect mats, like <laughs> so perfect. So I'm just picking those out now. I need to pick out some of the more neutral colors in here to really round it out. And then I'll show you the palette. Okay, to be honest, I kind of like hate this color story. Like looking at this, I'm like, oh. Stripping it away from Pat McGrath, stripping it away from Holiday and the beautiful packaging and the fantasy. I find this color story, like uh, it, the colors individually, beautiful. The colors, uh, by each other. I don't like, yes, I think you could create beautiful looks. It's just, it doesn't inspire me, I guess. It looks jumbled. It It's a lot. I don't know. And I feel like I tried to keep pretty similar to it. Like if you really look at each color in here, it's very similar to what's going on in the palette. Anyway, let's go through what I decided to pick out. Starting off here, this is that chocolate shade uh, that I used in the last palette, the Rose Metals, again, showing how single shadows can be reused over and over to create different color stories and get re-inspired, which is so amazing. This is pretty similar and the closest I thought I had to the shadow in the palette. So it's just a matte color and one of the few matte neutral shades. Next, this is a shadow from Glam Shop and I wanted to put in a nice neutral sparkle. This is one of those like cool tone champagne type colors. This is decorative from Glam Shop and it has a nice uh, texture to it. Something I was thinking about with this palette is having the mattes be colorful, but then having the shimmers have a lot of texture. So I chose a lot of my more special shades for the shimmers just to add some more pizzazz. Um, but next, this is a matte navy. This is from Luxie. Again, I'm telling you, all of 
of the matte shades I felt like were like spot on from Luxy. This is the shade called Complicated, just a nice matte navy blue, not too big of a deal, um, but I feel like really in the palette is a nice one, so I'm glad I could recreate it. Next in the palette, this I chose, it just looked kind of crystally and white, and I chose a more uh, subtle yet shimmery kind of transformative shade. So this one is from Glam Shop and it's called Magical. It doesn't have much of a base on it, but I thought it would look good as an inner corner, uh, a slight topper, or even use as a face highlighter, like really pretty and subtly magical, you know? It's not too sparkly, too textured. I really like that one. Then for the maroon shade, this is again, I think, very similar to what's in the palette. I'm not saying the quality is the same, but I do like the mattes from Luxy. This is the shade Heartthrob, and I really loved this more muted yet um, still quite red, like maroon color. And then last on the top row, I went with a more golden neutral. The one in the palette looks a little more yellow, but I went more neutral with it. This is from Glam Shop, and it's called Firefly, and it's similar. It's not as icy though to Magical. Um, it has more of a warmth to it. There were a lot of gold. It's Pat McGrath, so there's of course a lot of gold, and I wanted to try to add like different saturations, different amounts of yellowness, different amounts of sparkle or uh, opacity um, to try to switch them up. Moving on to the second row, this is from Glam Shop, another one of those neutral sparkles. I just wanted to try to recreate what the palette looked like. This is called Goddess, and it's a mix between like a gold and like a pink reflect in here, um, but very sparkly, really pretty. Then we have a matte kind of creamy but light brown. Um, this is from Sydney Grace, I believe. Yeah, it's called Iced Mocha, and it's kind of neutral, but leans a little bit warm or peachy, I guess, but pretty neutral overall. And then for the pink, I really wanted to amp up the pink in here and make it something fun, like I said. So this is from Shine by SD, and it's a really beautiful pink. I thought this would look so good with the colorful mattes that are in here, or you could just put this over the more neutral shades as well, but I really wanted something that was gonna be fun and pop with those colors. So that is the shade Pink Starburst. It's quite sparkly, but not too sparkly for Shine by SD anyway. Um, and more pretty standard pink. I kind of like this idea of it like being bubble gummy. Next for this really beautiful like orchid purple. It has a lot of pink in this purple. <gasps> Stunning. And you know, this is one of those colors that might be like, oh, what can I make that one? I don't know if I have that one, but I'm telling you the looksy ones came through. <laughs> this one is called Xenia, I believe is how you say it, and it's just a beautiful matte, very creamy on this one. Then we have another Shine by SD. For this gold, I really wanted something pretty full, full, like metallic opacity. This is the color Coinage from Shine by SD, and this actually is like a multi-chrome, so it goes green, it goes orange, it goes gold, has a lot of different reflux going on, but it is more of like a metallic, and I really loved that about it. And then last, there was this really beautiful beautiful kind of poppy red in the palette and I wanted to recreate that as well and I felt like this color definitely did that too. And this is the shade Berry Blitz from Luxy. Um, that is like so fun. This is a really fun trio. Last row, this is a matte green. Again, I mean, this is, I, I don't think I could hope for something more perfect. Uh, this is the shade Gremlin from Luxie and I feel like it matches so perfect, especially for what I'm gonna ever use that color for. Like when I think about it, if I bought this palette, like how many times am I gonna even use that green? Seriously. Okay, next, another gold. This one is a really pretty yellow gold. I wanted to have that color in the palette that was like lighter, but still very gold. And this one from Shine, I feel like is so, so pretty. This is the shade Timeless, and it really does shine gold, but then the base on it's a more transparent or kind of almost gray even. So I thought that one was beautiful, a really nice, like it has like a buzz to it. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what it feels like it looks like to me. <laughs> and then next, a nice purple, a nice matte, more royal purple. This one leans a little more cool tone than that like orchid that was in here. 
Again, really happy with those. I don't know why it's giving me like preppy vibes, like a collared shirt, but you're still kind of quirky. And that's the shade Snack. Okay, I always forget to tell you guys, I don't know what's wrong with me. Moving into the last couple swatches, this one I thought was so pretty. So there's like this icy blue shimmer in the palette and I think that's really fun. It's one of the only like really true colorful, colorful shadows that isn't a matte. This is Pacific Blue from Shine by SD and it is so pretty. It has more like a blue base with silver and orange and pink and purple like shimmers on top of it and I just thought it was so pretty kind of elevated um, a little bit different than what's in the palette but I think still serves a similar purpose then for the hot pink oh another looksy shadow this is so hot pink this reminds me of the shade savage from urban decay this is called cherry blossom love that and then last I wanted a really pretty orange and this one from shine was so pretty it has an orange but then also like a pink flip to it and it's stunning this one's called invested from the fantasy collection and I really love that I wanted to make sure too that it was different from the pink so just to show you there they definitely give off a different look I didn't want it to be like essentially the same thing. So um, yeah, that was something I was worried about or made sure it didn't happen. And now to swatch it out. All right guys, so here it is all swatched out. Um, I don't, yeah, I'm again, I don't think that there's a lot to be desired in the swatches of this palette and I don't think I would create this if I wasn't trying to copy what Pat did. I mean, it's not exact for sure. When I think of the video of the swatches that I've seen, um, there's definitely more to the metallics that she has, but for my purposes, um, yeah, it's it's okay. Definitely makes me happy I didn't pick it up, I guess, overall, because I have all the mattes if I wanted to do something with them. I like all these singularly. I just don't know if it'd get the use. I really don't. So anyway, that is the Pat McGrath palette, at least my version of it. For the last palettes, I am going to kind of combine two palettes together. So I want to recreate a version of the Huda palette that came out, the Empowered palette, but I also kind of want to add in maybe some things from the Tarte Man Eater. The Huda one to me is pretty but I just feel like I can probably recreate that even without my singles probably within palettes I already have and then with the man eater I actually wanted this for a hot second and I'm really glad I didn't buy it because I'm now like clear edit and I'm like no <laughs> I don't want that one it's pretty big and yes it is very fall and I've heard really great reviews of it actually so I think the formula is probably pretty good but again it's just pretty large and lots of different options but I think I can just recreate it and I'll be okay like I think I can pass so to Together, I think I'm just gonna create a mega palette where it's kind of a little bit of everything and I'm probably just gonna show swatches of that at the end and if you're really interested in the colors, I'll put them down below because my voice is still recovering from being sick and also my hand is like, pretty stained. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah. So I hope you guys don't mind, but if anything, you know, if you're just watching this at home, I hope it's relaxing and um, maybe even getting you to look at some of your own shadows. So I'm gonna pick out some colors so I can create a fun fall neutral type palette. Okay guys, I'm pretty into this. Look at this big old palette. So as you can see, I definitely took some inspiration from the Tarte. I really like the idea of the greens, some of the maroons. I even went a little purple because I thought that was nice, but I really wanted to keep a pretty neutral tone overall. There's also some cool tones in here. Like really, I feel like this is just the ultimate fall neutral palette. You could go pretty warm, pretty green, pretty purple, gold, like, ah! Oh! so much fun stuff in here. Um, there is some fun texture as well. I'll try to like hold it up in different lights because it's just so much, you guys. 
<laughs> I guess I'll try to swatch it. I know that sounds like lazy. It's not meant to be, I promise. It's just, this is like a shit ton of shadows. How many is this? 35, 35 shadows. This is this a Morphe palette? <laughs> This is a Morphe palette. Wow, look how much smaller this is when you don't have all the bulk, honestly. But I really love too some of these golden colors with the, like the purple, like these two together, even just this quad. Like look how moody that quad is. Uh, anyway, okay, let me swatch this. I'm gonna swatch it out. I am gonna do it for you guys. But I'm really happy with this. Again, another one I wanna like keep in, you know, my drawers, my everyday makeup, and hopefully do some fun looks with. And uh, I'm glad I didn't pick those up. I haven't done the single shadow exercise in a while, you guys. And honestly, it really is, I forget how much your view of a palette changes when you look at the shadows individually. So I figured this would actually be more uh, manageable to just swatch it by row. So it won't be a full palette swatched ever, but at least we can see the different rows. So this one is the top row, really nice and peachy. There's some really pretty colors in here. I love the monochromatic looks I could do. And I feel like it's a pretty good range of tones as well. So that's the first row. And I did kind of organize these slightly by color, um, not entirely. We'll see that as we go through, but I tried to do like the top two more warm, the bottom two more purple and cool. And then I had a bunch of green, so I put those in the last row. All right, so here's the second row, lots of gold. And I really loved the kind of earthy yellows and like this brown here, really grungy. There is one like kind of maroon shade, but it has a golden sparkle to it. So um, definitely very warm. This one was very much inspired by some of those tart colors that um, were leaning a little more mustard and golden. And I just picked my versions of those um, from the shadows I had. Um, okay, I think this is the row that has my heart. Like I I love this row. It is stunning, stunning. It is like this rosy purple, but really muted. It reminds me of like Meg from Hercules, you know, like something about it is her glam. This is Meg's glam, you know? I love it. I'm like obsessed with it. This should be a little palette that someone comes out with because I, oh, I'm obsessed. Like I'm so into this color story, you guys. This next row I feel like complements the last row I showed. So it's similar in tone, but this has a little more brown. It has some more like of this rose gold color, a darker purple that would complement a lot of the other colors in the other row too. So this is kind of just complementary, um, but lots of great shadows in here as well. Just not quite as cohesive as that last row. You know, that one was just stunning. All right guys, so here is the last set of swatches. Lots of greens in this one and lots of shimmer. I feel like there's like every texture and color I could want in this kind of olive color, which I think is so perfect for fall. And these could go great together, but I love something like this. It's a little more sheer, topped over some of the browns that are in here. I think that'd be pretty, or even some of the purples kind of adding those together, but that is the palette. And let me get all the palettes really fast all together. All right, so here they all are. Some of them are missing because I like, was using them in different ones, but I think these two, like the rose metals as well as the fall palette, although I really like this one going, looking back at it, I'm like, oh. I like that. Um, these three, I definitely think I'll get some use out of. Maybe I'll combine the two. I think this was good to get out of my system by duping. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think I'm still gonna do a little look. So um, yeah, let's cut to the eye look. All right, let's get started on the look. I'm gonna prime my eyelids first. I think for the actual palette, I'm probably just gonna go into the ABH one, like the dupe I made for that. I'm keeping it simple, like one shadow. Easy, easy look, you know how I do. So for primer, I'm using the Sigma base. I like this one because it 
creates a nice base and kind of blanks out my eyelid so I have a good space to work with. To start off today, I'm actually going to just put a little bit of a contour color in my crease. This is just to add a little bit of a subtle transition. I've been really enjoying doing this lately so that I don't have too much of a color down, but I have a transition going for when I blend out usually one shadow on my lid. All right, that's perfect. Just that tiny bit helps, I feel like, just to make sure everything's blended. And I have been wanting to use this shade since I picked it out for this palette. I'm gonna go in with the shade Thorny. This is just a nice metallic taupe color. It has a nice amount of shine, but it's not super sparkly, and I've really been liking those mid-tone colors, just one shadow all over the lid blended out, and I think this one's gonna look really good. It also has like a warm base on it, which I feel like helps to make it a little bit more like natural, wearable, but still kind of glam. And I usually just go in right with my finger. I just love that. I love the way this looks. It's so simple, so easy, and that's it. Like, please, it looks so good. I'm gonna use a little highlighter to go on my inner corner and my brow bone just to give some light to the face. I keep it pretty subtle on the brow though. I try not to go too intense. The lower lash line, I'm gonna do something sultry and sparkly. I'm using one of my favorite liners I haven't used in a while. This is Rose Goals from Pixi. It's like a nub, <laughs> it's so short. And I'm putting that on my lower lash line and I tight line just a little with it too. It's honestly just the perfect color for me to give me a little bit of definition, but it's not too dark, so it doesn't bring everything down, it doesn't look too harsh, and then I usually just blend that out. I'll use my finger, sometimes I use a brush, and then sometimes, like, if you want, you can just put the same color on your lid on top of that on the lower lash line as well. I'm gonna do that today. And then last is mascara. All right, and that's the final look. I thought I would mention what's on my lips because I feel like people keep asking and I've been using this gloss I got from Yes Style. My voice, I am so sorry. <laughs> this is from Romand and this is the San Ho Crush number no. three gloss. I've been really loving it. The applicator is kind of weird. It has like a, I don't know, it's like a paddle, but it's a really glossy gloss. It's been on a little bit. And then of course I lined with my Makeup Forever liner, so. But anyway, let me zoom in so you guys can see the look. All right, so here is the look all zoomed in. Super simple, so easy. I mean, you could go and make this darker if you wanted to, if you're going out for night or you just like that darker look. I could have used something like this taupe shade to deepen up the outer corner, but I really just like the one shadow where it's not like weighing my eyes down, you know, but it still has that shine because it's not a matte and I, I just love it, I really do. I hope you enjoyed the duping. It was fun getting back into my single shadows and seeing what I have and getting inspired and really realizing <laughs> similar all the stuff is. I mean, that's always the lesson that I feel like this exercise does. It's also just a fun exercise in color and how things relate to each other and texture that I really enjoy. But um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.